Wow. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Mm. I tell you, um, that song has a lot of meaning. If you would listen to the words, it was telling us, you know, to be patient and just wait on the Lord. You know, at times, you know, it seems like he's not around. He's not, as I stated last week, where we don't even know if he even cares. But we found out last week that he does care and that he is on his way to our situation. So we must learn to wait on the Lord. Amen. And, and you know, <laughs> as I was here praying yesterday, I was... I was reminded of a church that said, I think it's in Kentucky or North Carolina, a Caucasian church that for the last, I think, four to five weeks now, um, they have broke out in revival. They have been praying and fasting and believing God that that revival will come to their church. This church is not in the neighborhood, but it's on a college campus. And on this college campus, the church, the school is called, I think it's Asbury University and, and uh, University. And they prayed and they waited on the Lord. And it kind of reminded me as I was here praying yesterday how we would just tarry and wait on the Holy Ghost. And we would just come and just wait until God spoke and wait until God did something in the house. Amen. To show his signs and his wonders. Amen. But we were taught how to wait on the Lord. Amen. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but sometimes we live in what we call a microwave society where if God hasn't doing it quickly, we don't think it's not coming. We think it's not coming. But we're going to find out today that God is not a microwave God, but he's an on-time God. Amen. He's not, he doesn't do everything quickly, but he's right on time. Every time, he's right on time. And what I love about God and his plan for us is that he's never late. Amen. We may be late, but he's never late. Amen. So if you can turn with me to Psalms 40. And as I always say, sometimes I get very excited because I'm the first partaker of it. And I haven't learned how to harness the Holy Spirit. If you have learned how to harness the Holy Spirit, God bless you. But I have not learned yet. So I get a little excited when I'm teaching or reading the word of God because that's how much it means to me. It may not mean much to you, but I believe when I read God's word and it hit a nerve or hit something within me, as Pastor said this morning, when Brother Marcus hit a tune, it set the tone for the worship service. Amen. That's the same way it is with God's word. Amen. You can read the scripture over and over and over again. But one day you're going to read it. And as I said a few weeks ago, it's going to spark something deep down in your soul. Amen. And that's what I love about God's word. Because when you need it, amen, you could just be looking at a morning devotional. But when you need it, amen, in that devotional is going to be the word for the day for you. In that devotional is going to be how you are to guard your heart, guard your mind, and live your life that day. Because in his word, amen, is going to guide and lead us and, sh and show us how to have victory in, the, in this world. Amen. You may not want victory, but I want victory every day. Amen. I don't want to walk around defeated. I don't want to walk around looking at other people would be successful, other people doing great things for God. I want to be part of the plan. I think it's Bishop Morton that sings a song, God, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. Amen. How about that? You know what I mean? Whatever you're doing, Lord, in this dispensation, don't do it without me. Amen. How many want God to do it with you? And how many want to take part in God's plan? Amen. All right. God, <laughs> Psalms 40, Psalms 40, and I want to read this verses 1 through 3 to you today. I'm reading from the New Living Translation because it really sets home this point on this morning. Starting at verse 1, it reads, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lift me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground, and he steadied me as I walked along. He, glory to God. He steadied me as I, walk along, as I walk along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed that they will put their trust in the Lord. They will put their trust in the Lord. And our theme today is I waited patiently on the Lord. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you for this word of God on today. We ask you to be in the midst of our service on today. We ask you that you would uh, just word my mouth as I share your word on today. I decrease that you may increase, and I pray that something will be said to encourage all of our hearts on this day. We thank you, and we give you glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated and give an honor to our pastor. We just thank God for his word. As I stated today, um, we must learn to wait patiently on the Lord. And, and as I was uh, studying and I said, Lord, how can I engage the people and get them thinking about waiting? And the Lord said, uh, talk about a meal. And I don't know about you all, but how many of us remember the time where we didn't have a five-minute microwave meal? Amen. Where in the kitchen, your mom or your grandmom on a Sunday or on a uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas or whenever it may be, in the old days, it was every day. Amen. It wasn't those side days where the day was not, they were in the kitchen all the time. And what hit me and struck me was that many times you'll be walking throughout the house smelling that food. And you'll be like, in your heart, you're like, man, I'm ready to, to, to eat this, but it's not time yet. And, and you just keep wandering and keep going around. You smell and you smell it. You try to touch some of it and get your hands smacked. You try to sneak a biscuit or you sneak this or sneak that. They tell you, no, you had to wait for it. Amen. Because you were waiting on something you knew was going to be good. You was waiting on something that was not microwave, was not processed food, but it was love and in the preparation of that food for you, amen, or for your loved ones. But I, what, I, what God was sharing with me is that sometimes that is how it is in our lives, that he's cooking up something great in our lives. He's cooking up something, amen, that you, if you just wait, a little bit longer, it's going to be worth the wait. Amen. Um, it's going to be worth the wait if you just wait a little bit longer. Amen. A few weeks ago, uh, I was out with some friends and we had uh, reservations at this restaurant. And it was the first time we were at the, eating at this restaurant. And our time just went on and the time just kept getting away, getting away, getting away from us. And many of us was like, look, we're ready to leave. We're ready to go. And I said, no, we're going to wait a little bit longer. So we waited a little bit longer. And then we finally got our seats. Amen. And then they told us because of the wait that they were going to give us appetizers. They were going to do this. They were going to do that. And um, they did just what they said they were going to do. So our dining experience just went from great to awesome. Amen. Because now, you know, we had free salads, we had free appetizers, free waters. They were just taking care of us. Amen. And I'm the type of person that I'm going to hold you to your word. So they were just taking care of us and the food was great. Amen. The atmosphere was great. The fellowship was great. But what I love about how God does things, amen, um, uh, the, the waiter says that uh, are we going to give you free desserts. But then when we looked at the bill at the end, the desserts were included. So I just simply said, no, bro, um, you said the desserts were free. And I said that because I'm gonna on, you know, I'm gonna, I want you to honor your word to us. Your word to us was that we're going to honor, we're going to take care of you all because you patiently waited. You patiently waited. So I don't know if the portions were large because they were large that day or if that was the regular food. But I, we, none of us could, all of, everybody took food home because we had so much food because they took care of us. And then they took care of the bill and everything. And on the way home, I thought about it, that if we didn't wait patiently, but if we would have been ignorant or arrogant and caused a scene because it was a, 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 one of those establishments and we were, you know, the only ones there. And we would have just made a scene with that experience been that great for us. But we are Christians, and we are taught to set an example. So what we had to do was we, has, we just fellowshiped, and we talked. And before you know it, we sat down. We had a great meal. The meal was, like I said, awesome. And um, it was, the bill was nowhere near what the bill was supposed to be because they took care of everything. But if we didn't learn to wait patiently and have patience with people, amen, because the reason why the dinner was late, because a, a family just chose to just eat and eat on and I could have actually we, could, we all could have said a few things because they were looking at us and for a while it was like, like they were doing it on purpose where they didn't want to leave and they knew that though that table was the only table that could sit um, a party of uh, six or more and but what I love about that day is simply this because we waited amen God to, uh, God honored our patience by taking care of of our food that day, and it was an awesome experience. And you say, why would I bring that up? Because I look at God in the little things, 
Amen. See, I see many people looking for God to do big, great, astounding things. Amen. To blow your mind. But just the simple fact that a simple dinner, God says and, and says, if you um, just show yourself kind, if you show yourself friendly, I'm going to take care of you. So because we show love to the people that day, God showed love to us by blessing us with an outstanding experience. Amen. See, that's how God does. And I said all that to say is this, that sometimes, you know, we, we're in a wait and waiting process. And that's what David was saying here. David was saying here that he was in a waiting process. Amen. And, and in this waiting process, what I love about how God does things is that God doesn't think, do things always quickly. See, sometimes we give up before the, the miracle is getting ready to happen or right before the miracle is going to happen, we give up. Amen. Because we tired. We saying, God, as I stated last week, do you really care? Do you understand I need this money now? Do I, do I, I need a husband now? I need a, a wife now. I need a new home now. I need a new car now. And God is saying, no, I, I see down the road. And, and, and the other day, a helicopter was la landing at the airport at uh, one of the hospitals on my way to work. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I've heard this said before many, many times before. I probably even said it, that God is in a helicopter. And when you're in the helicopter, you can see further down the road than I can. And that's what God is doing for us. God is on his throne. He never left his throne. And he already knows everything about us. So he knows how to work on our behalf. He knows what to put in our life, when to put it in our life, what to take away, when to take it away. Because he is God. And when he does it, amen, we must look to him as the author and finisher of our faith. And when we do that, amen, it's going to make our life so much better that when we're in our waiting, that we wait patiently. Yeah. Amen. And, and as stated, David here, the first thing that I, I love about this scripture is that David says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. Don't you, you got to catch this. And I, like I said, I don't want to get too excited, but you got to understand we're talking about God on the throne, the God who created the world, God who is in charge of not just you and me, but every he's watching over their entire world. But in this word, it tells us that he turned to me. Yeah. Glory to God. Don't that get that should get you excited. Because what, what God is saying in his word is that I can turn to you, I can turn to you, I can turn to you, I can turn to Berlin, New Jersey, I can turn to Asia, I can turn to China, I can turn to all these different places and hear the cry of my people because I am God. I am the one who created all this and I can hear the cries of my people. So I'm not dedicated or dedicated to one person at a time, but I can touch and heal the whole world all at one time. And he says here that he turned to me. Glory to God. Isn't that personal? Isn't that so personal that God would take the time to turn to you and your situation? And not only does he turn to you, but he hears your cry. He hears your cry. See, you're not crying alone. You think you're crying alone. You're crying yourself to sleep at night. But our God is watching over you. God is, 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 is bottling up, as the word says, all those tears. Because one day he's going to come to your defense. He's going to come to your rescue. So we see here in this first part of the scripture, amen, God lifted David out of his despair. And what I love about this despair, going on to per, uh, uh, point two, well, let me read you a couple of scriptures first. In Psalms 145, 14, it says, the Lord upholdeth all that fall and right and raises up all those that are bowed down. So that means if you bow down, you're struggling, you're hurting, he's able to raise you up. Yes. Glory to God. Psalms 145, 14, Psalms 3, 2 and 5 says this. Many there be many be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid, I mean, yeah, I laid me down and slept. I awake, for the Lord sustaineth me. Psalms 3, 2, and 5. And as I continue on, God once again heard David's cry, and he turned toward David and lifted him out of his despair and placed his feet on solid ground. And what I love about this is that um, when 
David uh, was talking about lifting up out of the mire clay, out of the uh, when I was studying that out of the mire mud, and and what happens is it's like um, the mud that, that that they were referencing here was like a stickiness. It wasn't just your average mud, but it was a type of mud that stuck to you. Amen. I'm not sure if any of you all ever went in or got yourself in a muddy situation. Um, I know I've done it walking in my yard and walking in a place where after rain and you don't understand how muddy the situation is. And then you begin to sink. And when you begin to sink, then you take your foot. Sometimes you can just pick your foot up. But sometimes you got you to use a little strength to pull it out. And what the Lord, when I, when I heard that and re- thought about that, it hit me that some of us find ourselves in sticky situations that only God can get us out of. And what I mean by that is that you may be in a relationship that's a little sticky. You may be a little sticky with your finances. You may be a little sticky, amen, with your mortgage payments. You may be sticky, amen, on your job situation. You may be in some sticky situations, but God will lift you up out of those situations, amen. That's what the word is saying, and that's why I get excited about God's word, because no matter where I find myself or you find yourself, God is able to lift you up out of that situation, He's able to raise your head up. Yeah, he's able, amen, to put a a step in your feet. He's able to put a shout on your mouth. He's able to put a clap on your hands because he is able to lift me out of that situation. See, Psalms 18 and 31 says, For who is God? Who is God? Save the Lord. Or who is a rock? Save our God. Psalm 62 and 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Psalm 62 and 2. And we all know Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So where do you want to build your house? Where do you want to build your faith? I want to build my faith on the rock of our Savior Jesus Christ. The cornerstone that the builders wanted to reject. Amen. The, the, the Jesus that went to the cross and died for us. Amen. The Jesus that in my nastiness, in my ugliness, he still went to the cross and died for me. When I could not see straight and could not focus, amen, God still loved me enough to go to the cross for me. Loved you enough to die for you. Loved you enough, amen, to come from his throne in heaven. Think about that. We're talking about the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He was right beside God the Father the whole time throughout creation. And God tapped him on the shoulder. Only you can be the sacrifice. Only you could be the propitiation, amen, to win my people back to me. And he sent Jesus down. And I have not found in the word where Jesus complained or said send somebody else or do something else. Even when he had a second thought in the garden what what did he say not my will but your will be done that's the Jesus that we serve that's the rock that we building our foundation on see I'm not building my foundation on a on a uh, on a a ministry on a uh, um, a, a foundation or groups of people we have to build our foundation on the rock because if you build your foundation on the rock you'll be able to be wait patiently you'll be able to wait because no, you don't have people around trying to pluck you and tell you you're doing something wrong or you need to try this or you need to try that. No. When you're building your faith on the rock, once again, and that rock is Jesus, you're able to wait and you're able to withstand the onslaught of the devil. Amen? A quote, often, a quote, often, blessings cannot be received unless we go through the trial of waiting. When I read that quote, I had to write it down, and I said it may be out of place. I don't care. This quote blessed me because it's letting us know that sometimes, amen, we cannot receive the blessing without the waiting. See, like I stated, all right, let's look, do it this way. If you don't know how to 
I'm going to bring it right down to all of our level. If you don't know how to manage $100,000 when you first get out of college or out of high school and God chooses to give it to you, you can blow it and waste it and find yourself in despair. But if you took the time to follow God's precepts and, and his steps along the way and what he's trying to do in our lives, all of a sudden it, 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 the, the 50000 becomes 75000 the 75,000 becomes 100,000, and on and on and on, because you're following along with God. So instead of getting to the 150,000 in one year, it took you five years. But now when you get to the 150,000, you know how to handle the $150,000, because if he gave it to you too soon, you may blow it. So that's why I love God, and that's why we got to be patient on him, because if you give him your whole life, he's going to order the steps. And the Bible tells us your, the orders, the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And if you just listen and follow his steps, the husband going to come. The wife is going to come. The finances is going to come. The relationship with God is going to come. Your level of understanding of the word of God is going to come. But we must be patient. Don't go ahead of God. And I love that because overseas used to say that all the time. Let's not go ahead of God, but go along with the process. Amen? Amen? And after God takes you out of the miry clay and he places your feet on a solid rock, amen, the Bible says that in what we just read today, he says that, look, now, amen, he's going to steady me as I walk. Yeah. Amen? You know what the importance of the steadiness is? That how many people you look at and you can see that they're downtrodden, they're hurting because of their walk. Because of how, amen, the world has beat them down. Amen, how the world has kicked them to the curb. But when you take a believer, a believer is supposed to walk high with their head held up high. Walking like nothing is wrong, even though the world is falling apart all around them. They're able to do that because God is going to steady you. And that's what happened to David. God steadied him. Do you catch that? that? That in the midst of my storm, amen, I can be steadied. I'm not sure about you, but some of the storms I went through, amen, and still going through, amen, I'm a little tossed. I'm a little going a little left or a little right, a little, a little crazy. But the Bible says that God will steady me. And that's, why he, and that's why he says in his word, amen, be still and know that I am God. Amen. So while we all in walking in anxiety, stressing out, God is like, look, I think sometimes if I could just say how Kenny would say it, son, just chill out. I got this. You, you're around here stressing for no reason. You're around here ready to, to jump off the bridge. And, and, and there is no bridge going to come your way because I'm in charge of your life. So I'm not going to bring a bridge by you. So ain't no jumping off the bridge. So you might as well just wait <laughs> because I'm bringing the solution to your situation. Amen. And then after he steadies me, and this is what I love because Pastor even was talking about it on, the, on Thursday night with, on the broadcast, amen, that he's going to put a song of praise in your mouth. And that's what happened to David. Amen. After, after glory to God. Glory to God. You got to catch this in the spirit. Amen. It says, he has given me a new song to sing. A new song. So yesterday's song may not be good enough, but today's song, God, I love you, I honor you, I worship you, I thank you for bringing me out of this situation. I give you glory, I give you praise, because you are Lord, you are God, and you are God all by yourself. And then tomorrow, it just may be, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for giving, giving me life, health, and strength. And then the next day, it could be just, God, I thank you for waking me up. And then you're just giving them praise. You're putting a new song in your mouth. He may bring a new job your way. And you thank you for the job. Thank you for the job. But the most important thing is we thank him for eternal life. We thank him each and every day that one day when we leave this earth that we're going on to glory. Amen. So that's why we give him praise. And that's why we give him glory. I think there's a song. I give him glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Uh, I forget the, the, the singer. But I, um, it's a nice song. Because he's telling us each and every day, amen, to give him praise, give him honor, give him glory. Psalms 98 and 1 says, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things, his right hand, with his right hand, in his holy arm, have gotten, gotten me the victory. Glory to God. Sing unto him a new song. Psalm 71 and 23 says, My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee in my soul which thou hast redeemed. Psalm 71 and 23. 
And I love this because uh, I, I get so reminded of dad and mom. Uh, when, when the service would be going a little wacky or dad didn't think the praise was up to point, he would, he would stop everything and he would come over here, turn with me. And one of, the, one of the psalms that he would turn to was Psalms 150. And he would say it like this, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the ferment of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery in the heart, praise him with the timbre and dance, praise him with the string instruments and organs, praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that have breath Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? So these first points, he's going to lift us out of despair. He's going to hear our cry and turn toward us. He's going to lift us out of despair, and he's going to place our feet on solid ground. And as he places our feet on solid ground, then he tells us that he's going to walk with us and he's going to steady us. And last point I said was he's going to put a new song of praise in your mouth. In your mouth. He's going to put a new song of praise. If you can turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40. And we're going to wind this down. We're going to read these four scriptures. Once again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. It says, starting at verse 28, Have you never heard, have you never understood, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weary, weak, I'm sorry, never grows weak or weary, no one can measure the depths of his understanding. His power, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Glory to God. Those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Glory to God. And this is where I got to slow down because I, I know I'm going to get excited because you got to understand this. In this particular verse, amen, we is, God is letting, letting the children of Israel know. We, the children of Israel find themselves in a situation where they're in captivity. They were in Babylon, amen. So uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah, amen, was sent to them to give them this word of encouragement, amen. And this word, this is what he's sharing with them. How many know that, that, that you were you at your moment of fainting, you at your moment of giving up, amen? This is where the children of Israel found themselves at, amen? They were, they were tired. They were done. They were in bondage. They were getting beat. They were getting whipped. They were under the control of a ruling king that was not uh, uh, conducive to them, amen? So it was a bad situation, and a prophet comes along, and he tells them, amen, that, look, have you not heard, have you never understood that God is an everlasting God, the creator of all earth, glory to God, uh, uh, he never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. And then he says, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Yeah. Glory to God. He's letting them know that at their weakest moment, and this is where I've learned uh, years ago uh, studying um, when we raise our hands, and one of the things it says when we raise our hands, in direct praise and worship to God, that means that we're surrendering all. Many of us believe that, that you know, when the police come and he tells you to put your hands up, but in worship, amen, we're saying to God that I surrender all to you. All to you I owe my praise. All to you I owe my worship. All to you I owe my honor and glory. It's all 
to you because I surrender all to you. And when we surrender all to him, it's saying that I'm going to let go of my understanding and let go of my strength. Now I'm going to stand on God's strength and I'm going to stand on God's power. So to the weak, amen, he says that I'm going to give you strength. Not only am I going to give you strength to face tomorrow, but I'm going to give you power, amen, to walk on through that situation. That's what he says here in his word. It's not what I'm saying, but it's what his word is saying. His word is saying to the weak, you're going to be strong. And not only are you going to be strong, but I'm going to make you, I'm going to give you a power. And I talk about this, I laugh at when I said it many years ago, when, you, when you're cutting your teeth, when you learn how to speak. Uh, I, I always thought about when the Holy Spirit came upon a situation or upon you, amen, it was like Clark Kent when he went into a phone booth. He went in one way, but he came out another way. How many know that when we walk in the presence of God, yes. amen, we, we don't look the same, we don't talk the same, we don't act the same, but it gives you a supernatural power that you believe that you can walk through walls because the Holy Spirit is now coming alive in you and you think that nothing can harm you, nothing can touch you because it's not you thinking any longer, but it's the Holy Spirit within you that has come alive, amen. So I call it the Superman that's on the inside, amen. If you want to be Batman, be Batman, amen, be whatever. But I love Clark Kent because he went into a booth and he came out. How about us? We go into a church and we come out. Amen. We go to the altar and we go away. We go to the, pray, to the altar and worship and praise God and ask the Holy Spirit to come and reside on us and we walk away with power. And what I love about this power is it's not just made for the church, but it's made for outside the church. See, that's the problem that, 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 that when we have the love factor that we are missing in our world today, it's because the people are walking in their own strength and they're walking in their own power. That's why the people that have strength and have power can love the unlovable, can love those that despitefully use them, can love those, amen, that don't care about them. It's all because of the strength and power that God has gave us. Glory to God. And as you move on, Many of us get tired and weak. I think about as we age, amen, um, many of us can't do the same things that we did at 21. And I'm still young, and I've been saying this quite a bit lately, I don't know why, but I guess because of all these different pains and breakdowns on you, that's happening, and how I want to do certain things, but I can't do some of, the, some of the things that I used to do, amen? So what that's telling me is that, look, at some point, amen, that even the young men will fail. And what it's talking about these young men is these, th this word is talking about vibrant men, vibrant young youth that's able to do great things, move stuff around. It kind of reminds me of uh, Deacon Jason, you know, you tell him to move one chair, he got three, four together, moving them. Um, or <laughs> he just does extra because he is that way. <laughs> Amen. But even he is going to one day get weak. And that strength is going to fail him. And that's just like what's happening in this scripture to the church of, uh, to the children of Israel, the Israelites, where even the young men begin to fall in exhaustion. Amen. And it's letting us know that, that it's not just going to be the old that's going to fall in exhaustion or could fall into exhaustion. It could be young and old. And it's going to be a point where we all going to need the strength of God to come alive in our lives. No matter where you find yourself in a walk of life, amen, you're going to need God's strength and you're going to need his power at some point. And I, I, I said some point, but I think I need his strength and power every day. Every day. Amen. And then verse 31 says, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. And that's what I love about God. Because our trust is in the Lord. Our trust is not in our bank accounts, it's not in our education, it's not in the church we're affiliated with, but our trust is in the Lord. And when we put our trust in the Lord, we will find new strength. And then what I love about this strength is that it's going to uh, put a spirit, such a spirit in you that um, it's going to cause you to soar on wings like eagles. And what I love about eagles, and I've been just studying more and more about it, not just for this lesson, but... Uh, 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 just reading about them because I, I was amazed on Facebook the other day. They showed this huge eagle getting ready to come down. And, and we know that uh, eagle can see miles and miles away on their prey. So they don't have to come up on their prey to, to find their prey, but they have already scoped out 
and they already had planned where their prey is going to come from, from miles away. So this eagle came, and it was only by, I guess, grace of God that when he swooped down, he realized that it was a human. And, and then when he realized that it was a human, he flew on by. But what made me so uh, amazed was his wingspan. His wingspan was, uh, they, the, um, the, the particular writer says, almost nine feet long. Amen. His wingspan. So when he came by this gentleman that was swimming, and it looked like a little, 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 little dot compared to the eagle that was going by. And what I love about an eagle is that it goes to heights that the normal birds don't go. <laughs> Please catch this. Some of the people we hang with and roll with, as they would say, can go to the heights and depths that God is trying to take each and every one of us to. And what I love about this is that when the eagle soars, amen, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't flap like birds flap. Amen. He doesn't fly like a, a, a chicken would flap because a chicken flaps and a chicken goes nowhere. But an eagle don't flap. Amen. The eagle has a sense that when the presence of air the turbulence of air is coming by. The, 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 the writers and, the, and what I've studied says he would just open his wings and begin to fly. And not only will he fly, but each level of that wave, that air wave that he's on, takes him higher and higher. Amen. And, and I've read it that he's, he can get up to 30,000 feet. And how many know that that's normally where airplanes fly because they want to get over storms. They want to get over dangers. They want to be able to get to destinations faster. So they take them up to 30,000 feet to soar above the situations below. Glory to God. So this is what God is saying in this word here is that I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to give you enough power that you're going to be able to soar over your situation. You're just not going to be able to be at eye level, but I'm going to give you power and strength to soar over your activity, over the devil. Amen. Over every situation, you're just not going to be at level, eye level with the enemy, but you're going to be able to soar over him and look down. That's what I love about the evil. Because many birds that stated can't get that high. Many friends can't get that high. And we're going to ride the wave of God's glory. And that's what that eagle does. It rides the wave of nature. And, it, and it's just amazing to me that you very rarely see them flap. They just glide. And that's what God is saying. That when you're weak, I'm going to give you strength. Not only am I going to give you strength. But I'm going to give you power to be able to glide and soar over every situation in your life. But the point is, you can't get it if you rush me. You can't get it if you're not patient. You can't get it if you just don't wait a little longer. But if you wait, he's telling you this, and he's telling the children of Israel, if you just wait on me, your captivity may be hard and harsh right now. But one day, I'm going to give you the power to get through it. But one day, you're going to look back and realize that you begin to soar over that situation. Amen? And you become the victor and not defeated. The key is to wait on the Lord, even when you think you can't take another step. He gives us all strength today. Are you worried today? Do you feel overwhelmed? God invites you to come to him and find hope and strength in him today. In our waiting, we must believe God will lift us up, set our feet on solid ground, steady us in every situation, give us a new song, because he has come through for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wait patiently on the Lord. Amen? Can we all stand to our feet? Glory to God. Wait patiently on the Lord. And before I give the, the salvation call, you know, this, yesterday when I was praying, I always look up here and I, I, sometimes I just feel like I'm talking to dad. <laughs> and I'm like, dad, I need help. You know, um, this is a huge vision that you're giving mom and, and uh, to carry on. And I'll be praying, like, Lord, I just want to be a helpmate. I just want to be there to help and assist mom. And I began to think how it wasn't by accident that he came across my life. And because he came across my life, I am who I am today. But 
What I'm trying to say is this, that he will come over here on this property and he will wait on the Lord before we was able to build. He will come and pray. Yeah. Didn't ask anybody else to join him, but he will come by himself and he will pray and ask God for the money, ask God for the plans, ask God for the architects, everything. But what I love about what God, what God did through the overseer and pastor was this, that they waited. I went with them a few places, and each time it was difficult getting those different places. And, but God said, no, I'm going to put you in the community. And here we are, restoration, on 33 acres of land that we thought we couldn't get, 16 and a half acres, yes, that we thought we couldn't get, but God worked it out because we were patient. It didn't take a huge number of people. And that's something that I'm learning even more. It took a Gideon army to get this church built and get this, uh, this land purchased. Because we were just a small church at that time. But God put the church in our hearts of our pastors. And many, many years we prayed, fasted, had, you know, tried to do dinners, but dad cut that short. Uh, tried to do a few things. But when the time was right, we got the property. And when the time was right, the people came along to help build the church. Members that are not even here today, but had great um, responsibility in this church even being built, in this land even being, being got. But God did it. Because our pastors learned to wait patiently on him. And what am I saying to you? That whatever your situation is, let's learn to wait patiently on him. Because when... The first day we came in this church, you thought worship was great today. I would never forget that day because the, 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 the church was on fire. The worship, the organ, the drums, the every, everything was rolling because it was such a beautiful thing. Because what was just a picture on a wall became reality. So what I'm saying to you in closing, that whatever that vision you have in your heart and in your, your, your mind right now for the things of God, Wait on him. And when it comes, you're going to know it was him. And he's going to give you a new song. He's going to give you a new dance, a new step. And what I, I didn't fail to mention, but I'm going to mention it in closing, that I didn't mention in the first part of uh, Psalms 40, it says that when people see your new song and see you shouting and praising God and know your story, it's going to draw them yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. Because they're going to know that you put your trust in God and not man. Amen? Glory to God. So if you're watching this broadcast today online, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And if you will repeat these words after me today, the God that I'm talking about, the, the person I'm telling you you can put your trust and faith in, will come into your heart and you will be saved and you will become a new creation because you have put your faith in Jesus Christ. Repeat these words after me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him back to life. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as my Lord. From this day forward, guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. If you repeated those words after me, you are now saved. You are welcomed in the kingdom of God by the angels in heaven. And not only the angels in heaven, but restoration is celebrating with you that you just gave your life unto God. And if you are in need of any information, you can reach out to us at rcfchurch.org, rcfchurch.org. Uh, go to our um, uh, uh, email page, and, we, and you can email us, and we'll be glad to get back to you with some information that can help you in your new walk with the Lord. And also, if you live in the Sickleville area or Delaware, Maryland, not Maryland, but maybe Maryland if you choose to come, but uh, Philadelphia, any of the surrounding areas, you, you can come join us live in person at 10 a.m., each and every Sunday morning at 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey. Amen? Amen. At this time, if there's anyone in the house that would like the pastors to pray with you and believe.